Uh, hey, what's up, guys? Working class musicians vlog for today. The uh, snowstorm is finally over, and things are starting to thaw out a little bit here. So, check my look in the mirror. You know, make sure my hair is okay. What's up, guys? Working class musicians vlog today. The snow and the frigid temps are finally gone for the time being. Had a little bit of a warm up today. I'm heading to my second job right now to go teach some lessons. And uh, today I just want to talk about trying to master multiple things at the same time. So ideally, you would like to be able to use a pick efficiently. And you'd also like to be able to finger pick and you'd also like to be able to Travis pick or hybrid pick and you'd like to have a good handle on all of those and be able to move back and forth between those I started off really early in my guitar playing learning Travis picking and that's mainly because one of my guitar teachers early on, Bob Tucker, was a country guy, and he taught me some country licks. And I was in the—I mean, back then it was you know Garth Brooks uh, had just hit the scene with No Fences, changed the world, and uh, made country hip. And so I had to learn, you know, I had to learn that stuff. And then I got uh, I got into Diamond Rio. I mean, Jimmy Olander was my hero growing up I mean his tone on the Telecaster is second to none incredible um, but anyhow I learned how to Travis pick early on and I also learned how to finger pick first on dust in the wind the Kansas song which I didn't know about other than my guitar teacher telling me about the song and I, and I love the song and I played it and that's how I learned to finger pick and then immediately I went on to Jim Croce's Time in the Bow. Um, you know, and then years later, you know, from that point on, I really focused heavily on using the pick and alternate picking and speed picking and all this stuff using the pick. And I always thought that, you know, if I switched back and forth, I would just confuse my brain and slow down my progress in, in each of those and not fully master one or the other. So I always thought you had to kind of pick one, which just isn't the case. In fact, I highly recommend going back and forth between the two. I started playing all of my blues licks and speed runs and all that stuff with my fingers when I just got tired of not having a pick. So many times, I mean, you, you if you play guitar, you know, those picks disappear and they go into some, you know, there's a a black hole full of picks somewhere in the universe. It's a cornucopia. It's like a reverse cornucopia where it just keeps sucking in picks everywhere and it's got like this, you know, just limitless capacity where every guitar player in history has all lost, you know, thousands of guitar picks. Some of them are recovered in the dryer. Others are under the couch. Yeah, you'll find them, you'll find them here and there, but You'll drop one and immediately later you'll be like, where did that pick go? I have no idea. I saw it fall right here. Where did it go? Anyhow, I digress. I learned how to pretty much play everything with my fingers because I just got tired of not having a pick. So I figured, you know what? I'm going to learn how to play guitar even if I don't have a pick. So that's what I did. And I still do from time to time. I just pick up the guitar without a pick and I start playing. And it's just like any other skill. You just have to take your time. You want to play those licks just as fast and fluently in the same way that your, your subconscious has been programmed to play them with the pick, but you have to make slight adjustments. But if you slow down and you pay attention to what you're doing, then you can easily get it. And the more you do this, go back and forth, the more you develop that, develop that skill. Now is this something that you need to prioritize or you know include as part of your regular practice routine? Probably not. 
I find it extremely helpful. It's a valuable skill to be able to switch back and forth between using a pick, finger style, Travis picking hybrid, and percussive playing as well. So, you know, if you find yourself without a pick, but there's a guitar nearby, go ahead and give it a shot. And I'll do an, another lesson on this later for you to kind of get you started, but basically I'm going to tell you the secret is, is just play everything that you know without a pick. It's really that simple. Just experiment with it. You'll quickly get it. And then you go on to different patterns too, you know. There's some very simple patterns, like I said, with uh, dust in the wind is a very simple pattern that once you get that under your fingers, you can apply that to many different songs. And then you can do the same thing with the hybrid picking too. Only you're just using your pick along with your fingers to pluck out those chords. And if you know triads, well that's even better. Because you can do, you know, it's, it's even easier with using triads. So, give it a shot. You know? You don't expect to be really good at it at first either. It's just like any other skill that takes time to develop. But you'll find that it's, it's not going to hinder your practice with the pick. It's not going to hinder any other, you know, um, aspect of your playing to develop this skill. And I think, like me, you'll find it quite valuable to be able to pick up a guitar and pretty much play anything you want without needing to have a pick. Because I carry picks in my wallet. You know, I've got a stack of picks in my wallet that makes my wallet, you know, quite misshapen. And uh, I still lose picks. I still can't find them when I need them, so, you know. All right, I'm almost here to the uh, music store here. Got several lessons tonight and uh, running out of stuff to talk about. So we'll just drive along here and pret pretend the camera's not on me. My goal was to release a video every day, and uh, that's really tough. It really is, especially because I've been real busy, you know. When I get super busy and got a lot on my plate, it usually gives me a little bit more energy and motivation to get things done. But at the same time, it's like, why couldn't I do all this stuff when I, did, when I wasn't busy, when I didn't have all this stuff going on? <laughs> you know, that's the paradox. If I got nothing going on and I'm bored all day, I get nothing done but when I don't have time to do anything it seems that's when I all of a sudden decide hey I need to take on 10 different projects you know <laughs> this is part of why we're all kind of messed up in the head a little bit but don't overthink it just do what you can when you can if you can as Dr. Robert Kassar would say, and uh, do your thing. Help others, teach others, learn from others, and uh, keep growing, keep rocking. It's a pleasure to be here. Until next time, uh, I'll talk to you later. Bye.